Against all odds, a youth soccer team in Thailand is trapped inside of a cave still, but they are still alive. Now the challenge is trying to figure out how to get them out. Mosquito season is at its worst in years. I'm Josh Butter live this morning with more from experts on how to keep that annoying pest away from you and your family. This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning and welcome to News 3 This Morning. It is Tuesday, July 3rd. We're all like getting the buzz in our ear. And you just could like, actually yeah. see if you look carefully on Josh's picture. Poor there. guy. Poor dude. He's, he's got quite the assignment Did he send him out with DEET? Yes, yeah. he said he did he said the whole spray down earlier. He's got the Wisconsin cologne. Right? Yeah, the summer yes. cologne. It's the soundtrack of summer. There you go. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst sound ever. <laughs> well, we have more heat and humidity yeah. in the forecast today. No rain in the forecast, though. Here's a live look from the Edgewater Sky Cam out over Lake Mendota. All the boats. I imagine the lake is going to be a pretty popular place today with temperatures climbing to near 90 this afternoon. It's a nice comfortable start though. 62 here in Madison, the Dells, 61 in Janesville, 64 in Platteville. It is going to heat up quickly today though. We're looking at highs around 89 degrees. And guys, thanks to that bumper crop of corn that we already have, yes. putting moisture in the atmosphere, it's going to feel even warmer, feeling like it's in the mid 90s later today. Here's a look at your first alert traffic. Things have been pretty quiet so far. I imagine travel, especially on the interstate, is going to pick up after lunchtime mm -hmm. today. No accidents, though, to report right now, so you're still going at posted speeds heading into Madison. People want to stay up to speed on that. They can, what, download the Channel 3000 First yep. Alert traffic? It's all there. Out. All righty. Thank you, Hats. You're welcome. We start the news this half hour overseas in Thailand, where it could be months before a team of young soccer players is rescued from a cave. The Thai Navy SEALs released a video of the 12 boys and their coach who have been stuck in the flooded cave for 10 days now. That water is being pumped out of the cave this morning. That's at least what rescuers are trying to do. However, some experts say it could be safer to bring these people supplies while the water levels drop. Some say, though, that that might not happen until the rainy season ends. That doesn't happen until October. CBS This Morning will have a live report from Thailand in about an hour. Families waiting to be reunited at the U.S.-Mexico border might have to wait until after the holiday before clearer rules are passed in Congress for how that's going to happen. Members of Congress have gone home for the 4th of July break without passing any immigration legislation. There's a new CBS news poll out on the topic. It shows it's a bigger issue for America's Democrats than it is for Republicans. That poll shows 75% of Democrats think reuniting families is a high priority compared to 23% of the Republicans asked. The primary race for House Speaker Paul Ryan's district is down to five candidates on the Republican side this morning after one of the men looking to fill his seat in Congress has dropped out. After 10 terms of representing the state's first district, Ryan is not seeking re-election this fall. The Janesville native says he wants to spend more time with his family. Psychologist Brad Boyven has announced that he is officially ending his campaign. He is now endorsing Brian Stile, who once served as Ryan's aide and currently sits on the UW System Board of Regents. Political activist Jeremy Ryan, businessman Paul Nalen, engineer Kevin Steen, and Army Special Reserve or Special Forces veteran Nick Poles are all in the race still. Iron worker Randy Bryce and teacher Kathy Myers will compete on the Democratic side of these primaries. They take place on August 14th before November's general election. Walworth County voters may have the chance to share their thoughts on legalizing recreational marijuana in the state of Wisconsin. Already Rock County and Milwaukee County voters will have that opportunity in November. They're going to have an advisory referendum on the ballot. Dane County's Board of Supervisors is expected to put that issue on the fall ballot at its meeting next week. Walworth County's Board will talk about the issue next week as well. Now, in all of these cases, the referendum is non-binding. It simply offers state officials guidance on the topic. Vermont over the weekend became the ninth state in the country to legalize the use of one ounce or less of marijuana by people 21 and older. A Milwaukee man whose job was to mentor teenagers is now facing charges for trying to firebomb a police station during riots two summers ago. Police fought with protesters in Milwaukee's Sherman Park neighborhood for two straight nights back in August of 2016. This is after an officer shot and killed an unarmed man during a chase. Court records released yesterday allege that 31-year-old Van Mays planned to bomb the Sherman Park police station with Molotov cocktails. Informants say the man who spent his days advising teenagers on how to succeed in life 
built and took those bombs to the station that night. There is still no word on what caused a house explosion in western Wisconsin yesterday. This happened in Viroqua, about 45 minutes east of La Crosse. The fire department arrived at the unoccupied building where they found blown out windows and smoke coming from a second floor window. They did not find an active fire or anybody there. Nobody was hurt. Investigators are still trying to figure out what caused that explosion. The Madison man accused of causing a fatal crash on John Nolan Drive is scheduled to be back in court this morning. 22-year-old Gavin Viam told police he was drinking and took LSD before he crashed into another car that was stopped at a red light at the intersection of John Nolan and Blair Street. Now, 45-year-old Deanna McCullough died in that crash. A reconstruction of the accident found that VM was going at least 60 miles per hour in a 25-mile-per-hour zone. He faces charges of homicide by intoxicated use of a vehicle and second-degree reckless homicide. He's being held on a $25,000 cash bond. Two men are in the Dane County Jail this morning after a massive drug bust. Sheriff's deputies say 40-year-old Corey Alexander from Sun Prairie, 39-year-old Tory Latham from the town of Madison, had nearly $60,000 worth of heroin at their homes. The deputies also say they found eight guns and more than $3,000 in cash inside those buildings. The men are suspected of selling heroin in the Sun Prairie, Madison, and Milwaukee areas. They now face numerous felony charges, including one for maintaining a drug house. Janesville police are investigating three local businesses that are accused of selling alcohol to underage buyers. An undercover operation revealed the Lions Beverage Mart, the Century Foods on West Court Street, and Aldi's on Deerfield Drive, all sold liquor allegedly to people who by law should not have been allowed to buy it. Janesville police uh, yesterday also issued a correction saying that Milton Avenue Beverage was, was in compliance with the law. It had originally reported that store had violated the law. 606 right now and a group of nonprofits helping seniors in our community is asking for more volunteers this morning as the organization prepare to merge. The East Madison Monona Coalition of the Aging, West Madison Senior Coalition, South Madison Coalition of the Elderly and Northeast Side Senior Coalition will all become one group. Those four nonprofits serve four different geographical areas, but they hope that they all pull resources from Dane County and Madison. So they're hoping that this move will help them serve even more of the area's elderly population without increasing costs. The merger is set for the beginning of next year. New data showing that if you're a teacher here in Wisconsin, you're likely paying more in health care costs than you were before state lawmakers passed Act 10 back in 2011. State Journal is reporting the data shows the average district is requiring teachers to pay about 12% of their health insurance premiums. In 2011, they were paying 5% for family plans and 3% for single plans on average. Critics of Act 10 say the data shows why it's harder to attract and retain quality teachers statewide. The teachers union also says while before Act 10, public sector employee benefits were better than those offered in the private sector, that might no longer be the case. Only six of Dane County's 19 public beaches are open this morning thanks to blue-green algae and bacteria concerns. UW scientist Chris Kuchar, Kuchar, Kuchar has says that visually these are some of the worst blooms in decades. However, it's hard to quantify if the magnitude of the blooms is actually worse. Heavy rain has been causing carrying phosphorus from farmland into the lakes where it blooms into algae and the really hot weather we've been seeing. Kujarek says that it will be up to the agricultural community to prevent this from happening in the future. The problem isn't going to go away and, until we can find ways uh, to help agriculture in particularly to figure out what to do with the large amounts of manure that's being produced by, by dairy farms. Dane County is trying to help with that issue with what it calls its Suck the Muck project that's removing nearly 900,000 pounds of phosphorus from streams that feed into Madison's lakes. We are not alone in the algae issues. You are seeing video from Lake Winnebago in northeastern Wisconsin. That lake is not closed to boaters and swimmers. You just saw a boat riding on there, but officials there are warning people about the symptoms of ingesting this algae that mostly includes or most commonly includes headaches, vomiting and a rash. In health news this morning, UW-Madison researchers are finding the Zika virus could pose an even greater threat to an unborn child than what's previously been reported. Those scientists are currently looking to how that virus can multiply the risk of miscarriages and stillbirths. They've teamed up with six national primate research centers from around the country, combining the results of what each of their studies found. And in a study of monkeys who were infected with Zika, about a quarter of pregnancies ended with miscarriages or stillbirths. Those animals were also more prone to something going wrong with their baby the earlier they were infected. And that's particularly worrying because many pregnant women who get Zika don't know they have the virus.
only thing that you can really do in those cases is closely monitor the pregnancy. Sometimes we can recognize signs that something is going wrong during the pregnancy through ultrasounds. Um, and really the best um, case scenario here is that a woman is um, going and, and receiving um, care during her pregnancy and that we may be able to recognize something is happening at that, at that time. So the next step in this research is to look at the placenta and find out why the Zika virus affects that so much. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, 10 after 6 right now. Get ready for your itch and scratch <laughs> segment here on News 3 this morning because all those anecdotes about really bad mosquitoes this summer, they're actually backed up by data. Yeah, scientists say it's one of the worst mosquito seasons in years with all the heavy rain and hot temperatures we've had recently. We are swatting away as much as we can this morning. So is Josh Spreider. He is live at Elver Park with ways you can protect yourself and others around you. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Experts say here in Wisconsin, due to all of the bodies of water, that makes it especially more difficult when it comes to those annoying pests. Medical experts say most people infected, about 80% of West Nile virus cases, will be unaware they are infected and will remain symptomless. The other 20% may develop flu-like symptoms. Of course, the Zika virus still poses a problem, as we just mentioned. So to prevent yourself from getting sick, there are pest control services like Quick Kill that can help you out not necessarily treating full lawn applications, but rather focusing on the trees and the shrubs going around the home under low lying decks. That's gonna be the areas that the mosquitoes want to be in their breeding sites and their harborage sites. So we're gonna focus on those to eliminate them at their source. Brianna Nearland says mosquitoes like standing water so you can prevent yourself from the pest by avoiding those areas especially, even though that's obviously hard to do so here in this state. So how does this year's mosquito season fit in with years past? We'll buzz into that coming up at 630. That is if I'm still standing, guys. We should send out. We've got a swatter here in the studio. We should send it out to you. Send this is how help. Yeah, it's how Danica usually keeps control of me <laughs> in the oh segments. My God. But. So not true, Josh. So not true. All right. Thank you, Josh. Come on inside. You bet. <laughs> so the mosquitoes may be one thing for the 4th of July holiday, but welcome to what's being called Terrible Tuesday. Not because of bugs, but because of all the traffic expected leading up to the 4th of July. Doesn't look so terrible at all right now on the Beltline at Rim Rock this morning. Very sunny though. You're going to need those sunglasses heading east. We'll get a check on traffic with Josh Tim here in a moment. So the swatter is called the Anchor Attitude Adjuster. Nice. Just saying that's written on there. It's going to be is. another hot day today with temperatures near 90, <laughs> a heat index near 100. Hattie's first alert forecast is up next on News 3 this morning. Go to Amazon.
Good morning from the Hattio Patio. It's a pleasant start to this Tuesday morning. Temperatures are in the 60s right now, but a pretty rapid warm up is expected. Yesterday's highs were in the mid 80s. Today is going to be a little bit warmer than that, and the warm up continues through the 4th of July. So an alert day has been added to the forecast for Wednesday, tomorrow, the 4th of July. It'll be one of the hottest fourths uh, in recent memories. High right around 90 degrees, but heat index value flirting with 100 during the afternoon. There also is a chance for showers and thunderstorms, especially during the afternoon, but that activity should begin to diminish as the sun sets. So here's your 4th of July planner. If you're up early, it's going to be a, a quite a mild start to the day. Temperatures will stay in the 70s overnight tonight and then warm quickly tomorrow with that chance for rain. Not everyone's going to see it, but it is a chance. 89 degrees by 5 p.m. The actual high tomorrow is 90. Here's a look at what's happening this morning on the radar map around here. Things are pretty quiet, but we've been watching some showers and thunderstorms across Minnesota earlier this morning that rain just west of the Twin Cities metro area at this hour. Now, Minnesota will be the focus for some rain over the next 24 hours, while things remain pretty quiet here across southern Wisconsin. We have a south wind today that's going to usher in some more heat and humidity to the region, but nothing but sunshine in our forecast. No issues with rain overnight tonight, but as we head through the day on Wednesday, should see some pop-up showers and thunderstorms develop as we head towards the lunch hour and then that activity continues into the afternoon. But watch how it diminishes by about nine o'clock. So that is good news for any fireworks planned for tomorrow night. Here's a look from our Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam in Platteville this morning. Clear skies there. We have a temperature of 64 in Platteville, 62 here in Madison. In the Dells this morning, it's 63. Dew points are expected to climb into the upper 60s later on today, so it is going to feel a little bit more uncomfortable. Those uh, heat index values will be getting into the 90s, probably mid 90s, right around peak heating time in the afternoon. Here's a look at your extended forecast. Keep in mind that alert day for tomorrow. Take it easy and be sure you stay hydrated with heat index values up close to 100 on Wednesday. Some showers and thunderstorms on <laughs> Thursday with a high of 85, then turning much more comfortable Friday and then heading into the upcoming weekend. Now let's get a look at your first alert traffic maps this morning. Josh Tim has all the details. Good morning, Josh. Yeah, it's a quiet start it's so far on the Madison roadways. The Beltline is moving well in both directions. Heading eastbound, though, you may want to grab the shades. The sun is looking pretty bright at the moment. Checking out Dane County, some of the usual brake lights popping up on the northbound side of Rona Road approaching the Beltline, along with Stoughton Road near the Beltline ramps. Downtown routes are moving well so far. University Avenue, though, is picking up down on campus. And other main routes heading into the city are cruising along at the usual speeds with no major crashes or issues. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Thank you very much, Josh. Thank you, Hattie. So Hattie and Danica could be heading home for the day after we report this next story. Add and Leah, too. That. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized you were on camera there as well, so yes. New research is showing less work could actually help us ladies avoid one of the fastest growing diseases in the world. And Leah's here with a breakdown of the details. Good morning. Pretty suspect timing, if you ask me. Right in time for the holiday. Mm -hmm. We're going to dip out. I kind of like this. Well, yeah, it's a Canadian not? study, so maybe not. Yeah. It was just published this week. It shows more work might mean more of a risk for diabetes in women. The research comes from more than seven thousand people tracked over the span of 12 years and here's what they found women who consistently work 45 hours or more a week had a 63 percent greater risk of diabetes that's compared to those who worked between 35 and 40 hours and that risk only slightly changes when you factor in things like smoking exercise or weight now what about men adam bad news here you folks if you worked longer there was no increased risk i guess that is good news but you have to stay we're gonna dip yeah. out <laughs> You already do work hard, so you, you already stay pretty late. I'm working hard to stay off of YouTube right now with whatever reaction I might have to this story. It kind oh, of no. doesn't make sense. I mean, you eat poorly when you right. like, you know. It's, it's actually I would imagine bad. I would imagine it's what women do outside of work. Maybe that probably so the study did talk this. about. It did point out all of the yeah. tasks you do when you're at home. You're a mother. You you historically also have a lot of housekeeping tasks. You have a lot of you have a lot of stress at home. So. Yeah. All there right, Leah, we appreciate it. Thank you so Run, much. See really you guys later. <laughs> see ya, see ya. All right. Mike, <laughs> drop. All right, so it is the time of year uh, when Animal Control and Humane Society folks start warning about the impact of fireworks on your pets. The 4th is happening when it's really hot out mm -hmm. as well. It's leaving some concerns as well for your household animals. Okay, that was a really cute puppy on. Yeah. Darn it. All right, we're looking at an alert day in the forecast here. Uh, the ducks. 
They're in the water, so they're not minding it one bit. Might be some geese there, too. It will be hotter, though, however, where, whether you're at Elver Park or anywhere else as we head into the 4th of July. Chance for rain and storms as well coming on Wednesday and Thursday. Hattie's got an update next on News 3 This Morning. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Hattie McLean. Taking a peek in at the polar bear early this morning. Was swimming earlier, but now I guess taking a break. Oh, maybe going back in. Oh, never know. Uh, the zoo would be a great place to be today, but you gotta find ways to stay cool. Temperatures are gonna be quite warm. No rain in our forecast today. We do have some clouds drifting in from the north and west. These are just high level cirrus clouds. No rain expected for us today. Temperatures will climb quickly this morning into the upper 80s later on this afternoon. Tomorrow is an alert day for the area due to high heat and humidity. Heat index values tomorrow will be up close to 100 in the afternoon. There is a slight chance for a shower thunderstorm on the 4th as well. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, Hattie. 624 right now. Public health officials are expecting to get a number of calls over the next couple of days from people reporting dogs being left in hot cars. So even when it's only around like 80 degrees outside, it can take just minutes for the inside of a car to get into triple digit temperatures. A dog's organs can actually be seriously damaged by that kind of heat. Dane County Humane Society says the shelter sees an increase in strays coming in this time of year because they're scared off by fireworks. They run away from home. They suggest turning on music or the TV to help mask those outdoor noises. If you find a stray, you can call the Humane Society at that number you see there 
on your screen. All right, one Madison tradition is changing its regular schedule because of the July 4th holiday. Another is not. We'll share the details here in a couple of minutes. Speaking of traditions, this is one many of us could do without, really. The annual summertime mosquito swarm is upon us. Josh Spryder is here with an itchy, scratchy update. He's at the thick of it all next on News 3 This Morning. Gas prices are 60 cents higher per gallon than they were last year, and more people are traveling this 4th of July. Add them together, and you know why AAA calls today Terrible Tuesday. This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the final half hour of News 3 This Morning. 629 right now on this Thursday, Tuesday. Tuesday, July 3rd. Terrible Tuesday, remember? <laughs> so I, just, I just mentioned it was it's terrible. It's so terrible we want to skip ahead to Thursday. <laughs> oh, that's boy. that's the deal right now. And honestly, with the temperatures today, <laughs> it wouldn't be, be a bad idea. idea. Yeah. Hattie is outside with another hot one today. Hi, Hattie. Good morning. You're right, it is going to warm up today. Yesterday's highs were in the mid-80s. Today is going to be a little closer to 90 for southern Wisconsin. Take a live look outside from the Edgewater Sky Cam. All the boats on Lake Mendota. I imagine that'll be a pretty busy place later on today as people try to stay cool. Here's a look at our current temperatures. 62 here in Madison. Watertown is up to 60 now, 65 in Monroe, and 64 in Platteville. Our day planner temperatures will take us into the low 80s by lunchtime.
then into the upper 80s by 4 p.m. 89 is the high today. It will feel like it's in the 90s, though, when you factor in the humidity. Now let's get a look at your first alert traffic maps. So far, so good. No big travel issues this morning. No accidents to report. So you're still going at posted speeds on most roads heading into Madison. The exception, I think, would be uh, Verona Road as you approach the Beltline, that construction zone, slowing things down just a little bit there. And that's your first alert traffic. Thank you very much, Hattie. So we are expecting traffic to pick up as mm -hmm. the day goes on. AAA is re predicting a record number of people out on the roads for this 4th of July holiday. That's why the Motor Club is calling this Terrible Tuesday, as Adam mentioned. And if you are one of the many heading out of town, Leah Linscheid has a few reminders this morning before starting up that drive. Good morning, Leah. Good morning. This is nothing new, right? Traffic for a summer holiday. Everybody wants to get up north, maybe down to Chicago, wherever your destination is. But a couple of things that are new this year. First of all, gas prices. They're about 60 cents higher than they were during the last 4th of July, and the highest we've seen for three or four summers now. But that's not stopping nearly 50 million people from taking a trip, a record-breaking number of people out on the roads this holiday. Here in Wisconsin, we're looking at more than a million Wisconsinites out and about. But we're getting some help from the DOT. It's shutting down major construction projects around the state to help ease traffic. That includes Verona Road and the interstate between Madison and Beloit. Still, though, with all this heat and all those people, there are bound to be problems. Something else to look out for, pavement buckling. We saw some of that pop up on the interstate in Columbia County last night. Probably more to come. So patience is the name of the game this fourth. It's going to be brutal, potentially. Totally brutal. Yeah. Ugh. All right, no, thank, you. thank you. All right, so the midweek holiday will also affect Metro bus routes in Madison tomorrow. A total of 25 bus routes will be running on different schedules throughout the city. Pre-scheduled paratransit rides are also being canceled for the day. You can find a full list of holiday schedules at cityofmadison.com. If Wednesday is normally the day you have your garbage and recycling picked up, you're going to have to wait an extra day. The city is not going to be making pickups tomorrow. The yard waste drop-off sites are also going to be closed. Instead, city crews will make their normal the Wednesday pickup starting at 7 o'clock on Thursday morning. People who normally have their garbage and recycling picked up on Thursday won't see any changes. The drop-off sites will also be back open on Thursday morning. If you're heading out on the water for the 4th, many of the lakes in our area still have slow no-wake rules in effect. In Dane County, those orders are still in place for Lakes Monona, Wabisa, and Kaganza. Water levels on those lakes have remained really high for the past several weeks due to the heavy rain that we have seen. Slow no-wake rules are not in place for Lake Mendota. If you're looking for somewhere to swim, only six of the 19 public beaches around Dane County are actually open. Bacteria concerns and blue-green algae have shut down the rest of them this morning. You can check for the latest conditions on the Public Health Madison and Dane County website. So I am mentally preparing for what could be some miserable dawn and dusk hours as I head out camping next week. Keep the tent tightly around yes. you. If you thought the buzzing was all in your head, not so much. Not the so experts much. are actually backing up your assumptions about mosquitoes. They are the worst that they have been in years. Josh Spreider is live at Elver Park this morning with how this year's mosquito boom actually compares to years past. Good morning. Good morning. All of that heavy rainfall and high heat and humidity that we've had recently is really making this year stand out. Experts say mosquitoes are using that moisture as a major breeding ground. And of course, they're attracted to us because of the CO2 we let off. Officials with Quick Kill Pest Control tell us they've noticed a big increase in callers looking for their properties to be sprayed because of how bad the mosquitoes have gotten. The Quick Kill folks use a mister to tackle the problem, though they say nothing is ever 100% effective. As long as you keep your target area sprayed on a regular basis, you'll stay ahead of the pests. Moving into the summer so far, what we've seen, definitely an increase from previous years. I would say if it continues with the nice rainy days and it never really dries out, then definitely you're going to be seeing an increased population throughout the entire summer. Brianna Nearland says if you plan to spend time outside, be sure to use insect repellent with DEET in it and also make sure you follow the directions on the label. Along with that insect repellent, you can also wear long sleeves and pants. Of course, uh, we have all of this on channel3000.com and it seems like no matter what you do, no matter how much spray you put on, they're still going to they're going to get you because they're yeah. getting me this morning. <laughs> um, so, so, Josh, I know you're with me in thinking that this uh, attitude, anchor attitude adjuster, <laughs> fly swatter fly is swatter. something that uh, Danica's fiance can take with them when they go camping oh, later this week, I think, maybe. Something. There you go. There you go. All right. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Appreciate it. Josh, you bet. Josh went right with you there. Man, <laughs> just agreeing. I don't know how I think about that. All right. 6.34 right now. I'm all thrown off. 
I'm a little concerned that he still has the swatter <laughs> over there. We do want to remind you today that the typical Wednesday farmers market near the Capitol Square will be held today, so it doesn't fall on the 4th. It will go from 830 this morning until 145 this afternoon over on MLK Boulevard. The normal Wednesday schedule will start up again next week. The Dane County Farmers Market runs every Wednesday and Saturday through early November. The 4th will not force concerts on the square, though, to reschedule. That show is still going to go on as planned with a special patriotic theme tomorrow night. The American Salute will start at 7 o'clock on the King Street corner of the Capitol Square. Now, just like last week, we wanted to remind folks there are some street closures. There's some construction down in that area. So you may want to use part of the day to try to figure out where you're actually going to park in order to make it there for concerts on the square. So one of the Milwaukee Bucks is in a bit of trouble this morning after a major fight during a basketball game overseas. Better news, though, for one of his teammates, who's the new face of the NBA on the league's signature game for the upcoming season. We'll share both those stories in about 10 minutes here on News 3 this morning. Welcome back to the program, almost 20 minutes to 7 on this Tuesday morning. It's the time of the morning. We always ask you to share a little bit of your morning with us. And the picture I picked today is from <sighs> so our friend nice. Linda Watson. I'm guessing this is Lake Koshkanong because that's the picture she usually sends us mm -hmm. from Lake Koshkanong. She knows I love it there. Uh, heading down that area, in fact, tomorrow. Nice. Um, yeah, should be wonderful. So, Linda, thank you so much for sharing. We appreciate it. Honestly, does it really matter what lake this is? It's, no, it's it just looking nice. beautiful. Yeah. Linda, you rock. Let us know what your morning looks like. If you can, take a picture, post it on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is. Use that hashtag, MyNews3Morning. We'd love to see some patriotic ones for the 4th. That'd be great. 
we always share our favorites right here on the program. So speaking of the 4th of July, the Madison Mallards are going to show their appreciation to those who have served our country tomorrow during their game on the 4th of July. It's going to be Military Appreciation Day at the Duck Pond. Special ticket deals are going to be offered to active duty service members, veterans and their families. It includes a reserve ticket and a Mallards USA hat for just $10. Reduced rates if you want to get into the duck blind. Mallards are also going to be giving away a bobblehead of Olympic gold medalist and McFarland native, the curler, Matt Hamilton. Tomorrow's game starts 105. It's always a fun time. There's M yes. Maynard coming in on a yep. zip line there. Kids love that. And if uh, you probably need something to do because more than half of the beaches in Dane County are closed today and probably tomorrow because of blue green algae, it's a bummer because Hattie's talking about a perfect beach day with mostly sunny skies, really warm temperatures. That lake is looking very inviting, but don't be fooled. Her first alert forecast is coming up next. First off, if you have a little kid turning three soon, please let us know so we can celebrate their birthday by showing their picture on TV. Thanks so much for watching News 3 this morning. Traffic moving pretty well right now on the Beltline at Rimrock Road. Gas prices are way higher than they were last year. AAA is predicting a record number of drivers this 4th of July. We'll share the details on all of that and traffic here in about 10 minutes. In sports this morning, Milwaukee Bucks player Thon Maker could be suspended from international basketball for a long time in the near future after a massive fight happened between his Australian national team and the Filipino national team. Maker and 12 other players were kicked out of the game after the brawl. Now, Bucks management yesterday refused to comment on the incident. Video of the fight actually shows Maker trying to kick numerous Filipino players 
who had attacked his teammate. Yeah, that video making it around the internet pretty profusely this morning, for yeah. sure. So from one buck star to another, Giannis Antetokounmpo somehow became even more cool overnight. The Greek freak was chosen to be on the cover of NBA 2K. It's the game's 20th edition. You can see Giannis and some keywords like Athens, All Star, and Fear the Deer on that cover. In a statement, he said being on the cover is a dream come true. He actually says he plays the game in his free time. According to the Journal Sentinel, Atente Gumpo is the first international player to be on the cover of this video game. It will be available for Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch come September. And we'll take on all of the time of Hattie and my children. Yes, I believe you are right about that. Turn it over to Hattie <laughs> now for a very warm forecast. Good morning, kiddo. Good morning. Yeah, we're going to heat up pretty quickly this morning. We'll take a look at the radar map. We don't have any radar uh, showing up on the map here. No rain for southern Wisconsin, but quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity for central and southern parts of Minnesota this morning. The rain is not going to move too far through the day today. Severe weather outlook is well off to our north and west for any uh, risk for severe weather today. But for tomorrow, that risk does get into northern Wisconsin, the marginal risk areas north of the Dells as well. So keep that in mind if you are traveling to the north and west for the 4th of July holiday. There is the risk for severe thunderstorms tomorrow. Alert days in the forecast here across southern Wisconsin. Not so much for the potential for severe weather, but more for the heat and humidity. Highs right around 90 tomorrow with heat index values up close to 100 degrees. So it's going to feel very hot and humid on Wednesday. There is a chance for some rain, mainly during the afternoon hours, but as the sun sets, those showers and thunderstorms should diminish. Temperatures will then slowly drop back through the 80s, uh, only to around 79 by 11 p.m. But good news with that rain diminishing as the sun sets for any fireworks planned tomorrow night. The sun is up this morning and skies are clear here across southern Wisconsin. We're sitting at 62 degrees here in Madison. Mineral points up to 66. In Lone Rock, it's 63 degrees this morning. Not a bad start to the day. Dew points are still in the 50s and low 60s. I would expect these numbers though to climb as we go through the day. Take a look at our dew point map across the Midwest section of the country and you'll see that you don't have to go too far to see those oppressive dew points. 66 degree dew point in Des Moines, 69 in Springfield and St. Louis this morning starting with a dew point of 73 degrees. Now we have south winds through the day today so that will usher in some of that moisture here into southern Wisconsin. Here's a look at future track heat index. It'll already feel like it's in the upper 80s and low 90s west of Madison by the lunch hour today. Temperatures will climb through the afternoon and so will that heat index. 93 for the peak heat index here in Madison, 97 in Janesville, 96 in Bosquel, and 98 in Prairie du Chien. So getting very warm and humid through the day. We're not going to see much of a cool down tonight. So through the evening hours, still feeling like it's in the 90s at 7.30 p.m. By 9, those heat index values dropping to around 80. Here's a look at your extended forecast then. Keep in mind the heat and humidity stick around through Wednesday. Wednesday with a high of 90 degrees it is an alert day in the area tomorrow or Thursday's high is 85 with some scattered showers and thunderstorms. A cold front will break the humidity though and the heat a little bit as we head into the upcoming weekend. Here's our pet walk forecast. <laughs> oh. Bronco, what? You taking my picture? Celebrating France's win in the World Cup. There I'm you sure. go. <laughs> I'm sure. It's got to be what's going on right there. All right. Thank you, Hattie. You're welcome. Morning sprints coming up next on News 3 this morning.
Time now for the morning sprint. Hattie has heat and humidity today and getting worse for an alert day tomorrow. The warm temperatures aren't the only thing you're going to need to avoid as the mosquitoes are getting really bad. Yeah, Josh Spryder's reporting on one of the worst seasons for those bugs in years. First, though, Leah Lynchide sharing the details of what AAA is calling Terrible Tuesday. Good morning. If you're headed out of town for the 4th of July holiday, here are a couple of things to keep in mind. First, gas up before you leave. You're going to see some of the lowest prices right here in Madison compared to the rest of the state and nationwide. We're seeing the highest price at the pump in four summers. Also, give yourself some extra time. A record-breaking 50 million people are expected to be out on the roads, one million here in Wisconsin. The good news, though, most major construction projects are halted for the holiday, but still expect some delays on this, quote, terrible travel Tuesday, as AAA has got it dubbed. Josh Tim's going to have the latest in traffic coming up in a few minutes. Thank you very much, Leah. More than a dozen Dane County beaches are closed today because of continued blue-green algae blooms and the bacteria in them. Only six are open this morning. One UW researcher says visually these are some of the worst blooms in decades, although he says it's hard to quantify if the magnitude of them is actually worse. Dane County is trying to help with what it calls its Suck the Muck project. That's removing nearly 900,000 pounds of phosphorus from streams that feed into Madison's lakes. So most of the lakes in our area are also really high right now. That means slow, no wake rules are in place and in effect for Lake Monona, Lake Wabisa and Lake Kaganza. The heavy rain has kept those water levels high over the last couple weeks, even causing some damage to homes around along the shorelines there. Slow, no wake rules are not in effect for Lake Mendota. UW Madison researchers are finding the Zika virus could pose an even bigger threat to pregnancies than what's previously been reported. Specifically, they're learning the virus can multiply the risk of miscarriages and stillbirths in a study of monkeys infected with Zika. About a quarter of pregnancies ended with miscarriages or stillbirths. Those animals were also more prone to something going wrong with their baby the earlier they were infected. That's a real problem for women who generally don't know they have Zika until well into a pregnancy. Right now, mosquito season is ramping up, and experts say it could stay this way for a while. Mosquitoes need water to breed, and with all the wet weather and high heat we've experienced over the past month, entomologists say mosquito season is getting to its worst right now. They may be annoying pests, but most importantly, mosquitoes can carry a variety of different diseases and pathogens that can spread to humans and our pets. So to prevent the bite, officials encourage you to wear insect repellent with DEET. You can also add to that and wear light-colored long sleeve shirts and long pants when venturing outdoors. Experts say unless we see a long stretch of hot, dry days, we can expect the mosquito boom to continue. Well, we have one hot, dry day in the forecast today. Temperatures will climb quickly this morning. Hardly any clouds in the sky this morning as we look west from the station. Our temperatures and heat index values will be in the 90s. Take a look at that heat index forecast today into the low to mid 90s during the afternoon. And that's your first alert forecast. Thank you very much, Hattie. Thai Navy SEALs overseas are trying to figure out how to uh, get a team of young soccer players out of a cave. Video from those rescuers show the team is still alive after getting trapped in that flooded cave 10 days ago. Now it's a choice of whether to have the 12 boys and their coach dive under the rising water or to bring them supplies until the water recedes. That could take months. CBS This Morning will have live reports from Thailand coming up after 7. Closer to home now, two men are in the Dane County Jail this morning after a massive drug bust. Sheriff's deputies say 40-year-old Corey Alexander from Sun Prairie, 39-year-old Tori Latham from the town of Madison, had nearly $60,000 worth of heroin at their homes, plus guns and thousands of dollars in cash. The men are suspected of selling heroin in Sun Prairie, Madison, and the Milwaukee area. The Madison man accused of causing a fatal crash on John Nolan Drive is scheduled to be back in court this morning. 22-year-old Gavin Viam told police he was drinking and took LSD before he crashed into another car that was stopped at a red light at the intersection of John Nolan and Blair Street. Now, the crash killed 45-year-old Deano McCullough. A reconstruction of that accident found VM was going at least 60 miles per hour in a 25-mile-per-hour zone. There's a new study out showing Wisconsin could get more than $100 million more per year if it starts collecting Internet sales taxes. The U.S. Supreme Court last month upheld South Dakota's plan to collect online sales taxes. The legislature's fiscal bureau says regulatory changes could bring Wisconsin up to $120 million more per year. Right now, though, state law requires an equal cut in income taxes if online sales taxes are required. Milwaukee Bucks player Thon Maker could be facing a lengthy suspension from international play after a massive fight happened between his Australian team and the Filipino national team. Maker and 12 other players were kicked out of the game after that fight. Video of it shows Maker trying to kick numerous Filipino players who 
who had attacked his teammate. Bucks management refused to comment on the incident. How about some better news from the Milwaukee Bucks? Giannis Antetokounmpo will be the face of the NBA on the league's signature video game for next season. The Greek Freak is the cover athlete on EA Sports' 20th anniversary edition of NBA 2K. Giannis says being on the cover is a dream come true. The game will be available for Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch starting in September. 6.56 now, and as we expect traffic to get really busy throughout the day, let's get one more check on the morning commute with Josh Tim. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Yeah, still moving well on the Beltline. No major issues popping up yet in either direction. Uh, inbound John Olin starting to tap the brakes, though, near the Olin Avenue and North Shore Drive intersections. That's going to add a few minutes as you head into the downtown area. But other main routes heading into the city, including on the interstate, they're cruising along at the usual speeds right now with no major crashes or delays. With your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Thank you, Josh. And our forecast has lots of sunshine today, just like yesterday. The view from the Edgewater Sky Cam is beautiful this morning. Keep in mind, though, stay hydrated today. High temperatures will be up near 90 this afternoon with mostly sunny skies. We are looking at heat index values getting into the mid-90s. Our extended forecast has an alert day in it for Wednesday. High heat and humidity, highs right around 90. Heat index values up close to 100. There's a small chance for a shower or thunderstorm on Wednesday. Better chance, though, comes Thursday. It is just going to be brutal tomorrow as people yeah. are out trying to be over the grill and out at parades and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Take Quick it easy. Happy birthday, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy your time off. Thank yeah. You up here too. See you in a little bit. All right, everybody, have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful holiday. We'll see you back here Thursday morning on News 3 This Morning. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.